All right, welcome back. This is the Pod D Podcast. This is episode 18. This one, it was called All In. We had all five members here. Rodney had to drop technical difficulties. Uh, maybe next time you'll get the All In episode. So we'll name this podcast episode later. Uh, we're going to start off with, again, we have set topics, no random topics. So we, we're trying to stay focused. So again, we'll start off with the question of the day which Cedric has the question of the day. Go ahead, Cedric. All right, question of the day. You're on the Titanic. The Titanic is going down. There's three boats that you can get on to. One boat contains all kids, which you have a 60% chance of making it on that boat. The next boat has all senior citizens. It's a 70% chance of making it on that boat. The last boat has... People about you, people like you, our age, you have about a ninety-eight percent chance of making it. What do you do if you get if you got to get on those boats? So, just to reset, Titanic is sinking. Three boats: one boat with kids, one boat with seniors, one boat with able-bodied adults like us. Which one you get on? 60, 70, 95 percent chance of surviving. I got a quick question: Are your all right. Are any of your relatives on other boats? No, just okay. just just you. No, no, no relatives. I don't see the hard question. I'm on a ninety five percent of so ninety five percent chance of the boat leaving. And you got a boat full. You got a boat full of kids. The kids and them old people are gone. I'm on the ninety five. <laughs> 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 It sounds like the right answer. Yeah. <laughs> it do. I feel like it's a twist that he ain't telling us, but I'm I'm on the ninety five percent. My job is to stay alive. At that point, no family even. It's easy. <laughs> what, well, so okay. Well, if that's that easy, because I didn't think so. What if that easy? What if you got a? What do you got? One family member that rep on each boat that represents one piece of your family. That's what I was asking. Yeah. yeah let's, it let's make it. Let's do that. Okay. Yeah. So you got kids on one boat. One, some of your kids. You got seniors on one boat. So maybe your parents or your grandparents. Then maybe you got your wife on the mm -hmm. other boat, <laughs> or your brother. Your age. What boat you take? You got to take one. Shit, I'm trying to ride them up to we all stay together. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> what boat you taking? So I got a question. Is the boat you take the survive? Does that mean the other ones don't make it? No, or? you got it's a 60% chance you jump on the one with your kids, it, a 70% chance you jump on the one with your seniors, or it's a 98% chance you step you, you you survive on the one that you got with you know the able-bodied people like yourself, your age people. Which one are you taking? Uh, put sign me up for the ninety eight. I'm trying to survive. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I can make it to the kid. And, oh my god! And, and 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 my mama and them, my daddy, they had their time. <laughs> <laughs> me, me. All right, no, go, you go ahead, Squeak. I'm gonna do the ninety eight because I believe that with collective minds, if we able-bodied citizens, that we could try to help guide the seniors and the kids. Which uh, one, like, which one they help them first? The seniors huh? and the kids? Probably the seniors. I'm going to help the seniors get on that first, and then I'm going to help the kids. But what I'm saying is that if we are 98% chance we're going to try to throw a line to them to kind of, you know, we know we making it. I don't know if we can don't, do that. No, don't, 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 you can't, you can't, it's just, can't switch it. you, you can't, you can't mess with it. It's just, if there's three boats and those are the chances of, that they're going to make it. Man, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a hard one. Like that's, I want to see, I want to see my kid. I want to see my, my parents. I want to see my wife. And I, I think I'm, I think I'm jumping in there with my wife, and I'm praying that everybody else make it as well. You got to take the percentages. 98%, that's but what you got to go. So that's two for the 98. What you think, Jared? 
Probably, yeah, the 98. 98. Which one would you take? I'm taking the kids where all day. <laughs> but it's 60% chance. They know. 60% chance, man. It's 60% chance, but I I don't know, man. It's just something about, even if it ain't my kids, it's just something about me being able me being able to try to pull them kids there. It's just, just something that me, I think, it's a little bit more. I don't know. It just tug with me a little bit. Mm-hmm. I think the seniors are okay because they've lived a, a life that is okay. And they they saw a bunch of their life. I'm thinking that I'm thinking of myself, man. These kids, you know, they got they got 60 percent chance. If I get on this boat with them, I'm gonna try to get them. I'm gonna try to give them the safety. That's so you saying you basically willing to take the bigger chance to try to make the future go? I am. I am. That's exactly what I'm saying. And I'm saying future is better with us here. So <laughs> I need to get back. You're right. That's what you're saying. <laughs> You got to area up. All right. Question of the day. Good job. That's a good question. Yeah. Very thought provoking. Okay. Yeah, that was a good one. Let's go on to. Uh, we have a couple fan questions. Hey, give me a second. Let me. Can you got? You can hear that background noise, right? Your back to You can't hear it. I can't hear it. All right. Give me two minutes. Just in case. Okay. Two minutes. I'll just cut this part out. Okay. Mm-hmm. I saw Rodney pop in for a second again. Yeah, it yeah. looked like he st- it looked like he wanted to come on back. He got some stuff to add. He wanted, yeah, he wanted to come back on. <laughs> Everybody's been waiting for this day. Hey, uh, you made a good point. You want to make that point you made about the prank? Oh uh, yeah. When uh I was telling Jared. He was really a genius. The prank is what really springboarded us to get together to do this. Really if he didn't do the prank, we didn't get on the first phone call. And then all of a sudden, we was like, well, heck, we got it. Let's give it a couple of weeks. And now look at us. I mean, well, look at y'all. I just been following from a distance. But <clears throat> That day felt like it was delayed reaction because when Teresa – did the reveal? I was still sitting up straight, like, huh, uh, "How you doing, Teresa?" <laughs> like it went, it didn't one ear out the other one, right. <laughs> and I didn't comprehend what she was talking about. Like, what you mean? It's a prank. <laughs> we got the split already set. So <laughs> I, mean, in my mind, I was like, I was like, "Who the hell want to buy this silly shit?" Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm like, man, if we got a big sucker like this, we need to, but. You hear things popping off off of some crazy ideas. I know, man. Like I'm like, man, was we really that lucky to pop off something for a name? Sure, no, sure no. Like, he like screenshot that little balance or something that Baker Merrill like what? Like what? <laughs> that was good, man. Man, you know Jack Crafty, man. He probably sitting over there. Oh man, I was like, this who want this silly shit? Who I had that? that damn money spent. I ain't gonna be <laughs> He was I had that ready. money spent. <laughs> he was sitting there telling his wife, hey, we got these bills paid, we straight. <laughs> I'm like, hey. I'm gonna lie to you though, Hughes. I was feeling guilty. I was like, man, I feel like I ain't put enough in to deserve no money. Well, you know, I think either you, Rodney, either you or Rodney, we all echo. The same sentiment, uh, Jared deserves the biggest lion share. You know what I'm saying? Because he 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 got the work in, but he counted with it was huge out there. I'm like, nah, <laughs> you you. Put he was trying power. to stay out. Of, he was trying to keep his prank going, so he yeah. was not say that. <laughs> shit, I was serious with that shit because I heard a bust move before, so I was like, hey, good check. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said, I'm like, <sighs> okay, here we go. Okay. Uh, just a little FYI. Y'all ever get to Atlanta, y'all got to come holler at your boy if y'all ever travel to Atlanta or whatever, yeah. you know. We got yeah. we got a spot. We got plenty of room. Just, just holler at me. We got you. Yeah. And you got to come see our nephew play. He liked it and everything. Definitely. Like, if I showed you a picture of him, he, he getting liked it. He got – he getting high school – right now he in the eighth grade. High school coaches is like looking for him. Right now. 
And that's in every sport. Okay. His baseball coach told me, he said, right now, he is a college, a D1 college level pitcher. Right now. Wow. So it's it's yeah. crazy. I always think about you was dunking in the eighth grade, wasn't you, Squeak? Nah, that was that's a rumor. <laughs> I was touching yeah, the rim. What did you <laughs> say? I was touching the rim. Yeah. I never put I never put it together. I could grip a ball, I could touch the rim, but I never put it together. Okay, here we go. Okay. Um It's going to sound corny, but this is just me trying to restart it so I can have a point to cut it. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, Cedric, that was a good um, deep thought question this week. Let's move on to topic number two. We have a couple fans. We have a couple fan questions. So just let me read these questions. And these uh, fans of ours just want to want to get our take on what we would do uh, in these um, different situations. Mm -hmm. So I think they, they like your deep thought question uh segment they just want to add on to it so this is from someone named melissa okay so here's a question if you hit a car in the parking lot and you dent the car do you stay and report it or do you drive off if no one has seen you me hey. me i I, <laughs> I don't know I'm, I'm probably just corny like that but i I'll I'll uh, I'll probably leave a note. I, I would I probably just too much to lose right now in this whole in, in life. Just to, that's just bad karma. I think I I think I'll leave a note. I'll let I'll, I'll alert somebody. Me personally. Hughes, what you think? The old version of me. I'm pulling <laughs> off. <laughs> you got shit to lose. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave a note. I'm gonna leave a note. I don't want that 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 comeback is is vicious, you know. That's me. And what you got? Yeah, it's tough. I ain't gonna lie to you. The old version and the new version probably burning out. <laughs> unless I'm unless, and now if it's a small thing, I'm out. If it's something big, noticeable. I'll even know. But if it's just a little boo-boo, a little, little love tap, that just chalked that one up to the game. I'm, yeah, I'm the same. <laughs> but, if it, but if I mess they stuff up, then I'll even know. Because uh, I would want them to do the same. Like if I come, they come out and they bump on the ground or something, then I would have left a note. Then like, they, here go my telephone number, call me, and then we get go through insurance and get your stuff taken care of. Right. That's the right answer. Stand up answer. Yeah. All right. Uh, I hope you like that answer, Melissa. Melissa M. This is from somebody named Chris Mix. I think they listened to our last episode. This this kind of came up in the last episode. Okay. So this question, we are Tom Brady. Do you keep playing another year and risk losing your family? Uh, or do you stay retired from the game you love clearly more than your kids and wife? That was my question. <laughs> I go first on this one. You gotta let that game go, bro. Simple. It, it ain't. It, if your wife gave you that ultimatum, say you didn't go and play twenty years, I need you home with the kids. At what point do you not be selfish and you just gotta be like, you know what? I done did it for 20 years. I'm going to have to let that part of me go and start to transition to your next part of life. I'm not about to lose my wife and my, what, two, three kids, all that over six months of playing football. I ain't working. I agree. What's your answer, Sid? Uh, I'm, 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 pretty much, I'm pretty much in agreement with that. You know, especially – Especially with the success he has had, if he wasn't a if he wasn't super successful, or if he was at a different level of his career, I would I would probably be on the other side of that. But since he's had so much success, it really just seems selfish at this point. He's won Super Bowls. He's done he's done all you could do as a quarterback, as a leader in the NFL. It's just it's just time. 
Um, but on the other side of that, though, on the other side of that is if he hadn't been accomplished enough or if it was still a really means for him to make money, so, uh, substantial money, I would probably lean the other way. But in his specific what? case, I would say he's he's good to do it. Do you think – see, the, a backstory <laughs> is his wife, Giselle, took a back seat. She was more – she was had more money than him at True. the beginning. So True. when do you grow up and be like, you know what, I can't keep doing this? And then what is he chasing? Is he chasing fame, paper? I mean, what what's the what are you playing for? But on the other token though, on the other token of that though, think about this. Just another playing devil's advocate. You knew what I you knew what I was on. When we started this, I told you, hey, I, I'm going to do this until I can't do it no more. Because I'm sure they've had that conversation. But, you know, the success. See, that's the part that we have. <laughs> it. The, the, if, let's just say, they gave, uh, you got 15 years and now you're done. 15 years came up and he still added five months. I, I I agree, but the only thing I'm saying is if the agreement was you know what I do, I'm going to do it until I don't want to do it no more. We don't know if that, you don't, we don't know if all of a sudden right. change because of his success. Oh no, you've been successful at it. You can stop now. No, that ain't, that wasn't our agreement. Our agreement was I'm going to do this until I can't do it anymore. So that's just playing devil advocate, though. Yeah, I kind of agree with you all earlier in a sense that it's a, it's a selfish act because there's another job line line waiting for him as a as a broadcaster that would mm -hmm. pay him decent money that where he probably maybe he would be away from his his family the same amount of time. You know what I'm saying? Um, but you can't get those years back from watching your kids grow up, you know what I'm saying? And, and not being there for them and stuff like that. You know, it's not like he, 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 he was playing for free. You know what I'm saying? You, you have the accolades, you have the money, you just have to, you know, kill your ego and put your family first. You know what I'm saying? Hey, let me ask a question. Go ahead. Let's say he came back, right. And they had problems, but he thought maybe she'll stick around for one more season. And, they're, they're having the season that they're having now, two and five, whatever the record is. Mm -hmm. If you were him, would you be able to quit mid-season to save your uh, marriage? I would try. Or you would quit mid-season? I would try. Like, a big-ass mansion as a man, a big-ass mansion by your house, I mean, by yourself, you know, like, I know Brady got a different type of, uh, he's a, he got a different type of range of women that he could probably attract. But the average man that's probably successful, that's not known with that fame, you got a mud, you got that mansion like that, and you don't have like your significant other in that mansion. That's like a sign of, of, of actual like failure. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to see what it's like to be in this big, nice mansion and, and you in the bed by yourself. You know, I uh, we grow up always saying. You start it, you finish it. Mm -hmm. If we're going to do it, we're going to have to wait that six months until either the season over. I'm not quitting in mid-season because it's going to be the same situation at the game eight than would it be in February when the season over. So I'm going to go, and I already went down that aisle. I'm going to finish it up, and then in February, then that's when I got to make my decision on if I'm done playing or not. Not in the middle. Once you commit to the season, it's more than just about you. It's about them other 53 players that did everything. I mean, that's, that kind of karma, I'm not trying to put all that on me like that. I'm going to go on the finish. Yeah, we'll I, agree with, I agree with you, Ant. That's, that's like now you committed to 53 more players. So I would never quit on my team. If, you know, you, you signed up, you there. Can't quit on the rest of the guys. I mean, no matter how bad the season going, that's just a quitter. So – no, I agree with that. But keep in mind, he did quit, like, uh, in training camp. You know, he took a break. He came back, but he wasn't injured. But I think that was all, I think that was all having to do with the whole 
marital kind of situation. Of course. Time away from the team, right? And and to me, that's that's when I felt like he probably should have walked away. But if he would walked it away, was, it was then, to him. that would have been. But once the season starts, you end off for 17. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, he is committed to the other guys. and Yeah, that's not – like, you can't do that. They not going to help you when you at home by yourself crying. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> well, you see them that. Like, but they, when you in that big ass, you in that big ass king size bed, it's cold as hell in this house. And you lonely, man. They're not gonna help you. You don't want no help. You know what I'm saying? Then you shouldn't have started it though, man. If, if you had the opportunity before the season starts to let it go and say, I'm gonna save my marriage. Once you say you sign up for week one and all that, then you, you commit it. But, but I honestly think he's at the cap of his career. But step back and think about this, though, man. At the end of the day, and let, you know, you hate to see a marriage in. You, you hate to see a marriage in, and, you know, the kids will be fine. You know, it's, it's always better to have a two-parent household, but the kids, of course, financially will be taken care of. But you are Tom Brady. You know what I'm saying? You are Tom Brady at the end of the day. Single, millionaire, quarterback, GOAT, can get any job you want. I mean, you could be in you could be in worse situations, man. Yeah, you can. You could be in worse situations, man. You know, some people only get to fall in love with just a few people. You can mm-hmm. date, you can get as many women, but when you're talking about somebody that has your heart, that has True. your best your your best interest, you know what I'm saying? You're not gonna find that many women when you you when you well established that will be pure with you. So when you have a beautiful super supermodel, you have to be able to 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 figure out if you're okay, you know, being with Kanye going through what Kanye went through, you know, with Pete Davidson and stuff. Believe it or not, crazy. to me that shows the immaturity that he had that everybody has to evolve. We all evolved, you know. As we got older, we can't be up all night and said how it's playing Madden, trying to figure <laughs> out what we about to do. We got we all got family, we got you know, we got to do different things. And mm-hmm. Brady, you 49. It's time to start transitioning to the next part of your life. That's a fact. Mm-hmm. Good answers. I also think she could have just <clears throat> waited one more. Give him. But she don't know how many times she did. I'm saying. How many I times think, he pulled that? If I think it was back in New England three, four years ago. Then he had to do one without Belichick. And it's like. She probably looking at him like, man, you ain't never gonna stop playing. That's mm-hmm. true. Yeah, you make a good point. This might be trip number three or four, you know, down the same road. She yeah, it's like okay, after the one Super Bowl after he left New England, that was supposed to be it. He did it again. Did it again. Like, bro, what you doing? You know, it was clear, you know, back in the back in the in the days, it was clear she was always it always some some things surfaced about she was always kind of scared about him getting hit about mm-hmm. him taking all that punishment about when they start talking about some concussions and cte um uh, hurt it came up back then that she you know she was on record saying she was worried about him she didn't want him to play so it you right you guys probably right it, it probably surfaced a while ago he probably just been trying to extend it as long as he can but but the lady definitely had his back so like you said he was you that's that's tough to find some she had his back because so. it's, it, I look at it like if he was a boxer, he would never be able to forgive himself if if, if he gets seriously injured next week. Mm-hmm. It, everybody would be like, man, it wasn't worth it. You should have been walked away. Because you, you had the money. You you got all the stats. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, what are you trying yeah. to prove? It ain't, it ain't like adding another Super Bowl ring would make you whatever. We see what you are. You know what I'm saying? You're one of the greatest – quarterbacks of all time you know you're not really proving anything this year or either next year on the football field you're not proving anything yeah you know what i really think i think he was trying to pull her card she told him if you play i'm gonna divorce you and i think after this season they he retired they get back together but this is just he trying to pull her car like you won't divorce me. 
and she did. So she going, they going through the motion of the divorce. Who's to say after next year he retired and then they get back together? Or they still ain't really together. They still probably together. Hmm. Not at all. Like like yesterday, so yesterday the divorce is final. Like it's no, no, no. They divorce, but that don't mean that they still ain't together. That's tricky, man. Like <laughs> the, the you know, you know how it is to divorce, but we still spending all our time together because of the kids or whatever. And then they see, you know, we like get my, get back married again. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think it may be she told him that's what she was gonna do. And he tried to call her bluff, and she went on ahead and did it. Yeah. All right, let's go on to our boxing talk segment. So I got I have a video uh, I want to play for you guys before we get into it. Okay. But I, I have a feeling we're just going to be talking about two boxers, Errol Spence Jr. and um, Terrence Ca- Crawford. So this week, Terrence Crawford released an Instagram Live video where he – gave his version of how the, the negotiations went with um, Terrence Crawford. I'm, I'm sorry, with Earl Spence. So give me a second. Let me get this going. Howdy. We're about to get ready to go live. Can you guys hear that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let me skip around a little. I would say in Al Heyman and them about May, you know, right after his fight, you know, um, just going back and forth, you know, they sending me a proposal with the interest of a Spence and Crawford fight. Uh, and, you know, we going back and back, back and forth, back and forth, you know. I was a good dude, man. I was a, you know, charming guy, you know. He's a, he's a cool dude, you know. Buying, the, buying I mean, still in the fight. <clears throat> They got the fire sticks. He laughed, he like, man, I got a fire stick too. I'm like, see? I'm like, man, ain't nobody really buying, you know what I mean, papers used no more. I said, man, we get this upfront money and we good, it's a no brainer. You know what I mean? But one thing about me and the, well, the different, I would say the difference between me and the difference between Spence is, I'm really my own boss now and he's not. He got to go through Al. He got to go through, you know what I mean, his team and act stand on you, on yourself. Why you want to put a cap on yourself? I'm like, well, that's not putting a cap on myself if this company is taking a risk. And, you know, risk, high risk. Let me pause it right there. What he's saying, what I skipped over is uh, Crawford said he called Spence. He said he had a deal for $25 million a piece. I'm sorry, a piece for um, for Spence and Crawford from some hedge fund. They were going to put up $50 million basically for them to split 50-50 to put the fight on. He, so he said he called Spence, uh, told Spence about the deal. Spence basically said, no, I'm, I'm good with um, Al Heyman. Let's just sign this contract and, you know, go from there. So give me a second, fellas. So, Hughes, I know you saw that whole video. So, again, it's just basically Crawford giving his account of why the fight didn't get made. What's your take on that video? Do you believe him? So, let me let me go back to what you said. So, when he called Spence about the $25 million apiece from, for each fighter, Spence questioned him and said, what about the back end? Mm-hmm. And then he asked him, Who's the money coming from? And Crawford couldn't answer those two questions. One reason as, as, a, as a business owner, you want to answer that question because all, all money is not good money. If you take some money from, from a cartel or some illegal money that they're trying to make uh, legit, and if you get raided by that, they're going to open up your entire books of your company. So you want to you want to be transparent. The reason uh, Al Heyman was 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 telling Terrence Crawford, why would you put a cap on this fight is because 25 plus 25 is 50 million total. Right. And what Al Heyman is trying to say, this fight is more than, than 50 million, you know. And so 
Terrence just looking at the upfront money. Like we all working people. Twenty five million, I take twenty five million. But I'm not a professional boxer, and I'm not a businessman that 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 put on a fight like Floyd and um, Pacquiao, and how much money they both walked around, they they walked away with, and and stuff like that. So Terrence is trying to be a businessman. There's nothing wrong with that. But what you want to do as a businessman is surround yourself with other uh, professional people that can help you make a sound decision. You don't step out in the um, you don't step out in that lane if you're never if you never done that before. You know what I'm saying? You get somebody to negotiate for you. And what I was expecting from this video was what Mike Coppinger from ESPN said that the reason this deal didn't go through was because Turns really wanted to fight this year, and they were forcing him to, into a deal that that uh, he had already signed. But when he did that video, he didn't echo any of those sentiments. You know, I would have, I would have preferred him just do the video and said, listen, I tried to make the fight. The money wasn't right. It is what it is. And just leave it, just leave it like that. You know, anybody can understand that, that, you know, you're not going in a ring to risk your life for, for nothing. You know what I'm saying? And so, when he went on to try to explain different things, he was contradicting himself. He was like, with, with Mike Coppinger, he was like, he did the negotiations and Earl Spence was nowhere to be found. And you just heard him say that when he got an offer of 50 million, he called Earl Spence. So that's a that's a contradiction right right then and there. You know what I'm saying? What's that the contradiction? I'm missing it. What, what's the, the contradiction? The contradiction is that he said during the negotiation, Earl Spence was nowhere to be found. He oh, and then he said he called him. Yeah, yeah. And then he just said he called him. So he was lying throughout this entire video. And I'm like, damn, man, why you why you make yourself look bad like that? You know, but if you're not paying attention, everything he sounds like he's saying, like you're talking to working class people, we hear in numbers of 25 million, uh, 10 million. That's good money to us. Nobody on this car gonna go deny that. Go ahead, Ant. I was just gonna, I don't understand. If he's saying he'll do it for twenty five million, why didn't they just cash him his twenty five million and then let them work the back end and get what they get? Well, the reason being is because Al Heyman has a relationship with uh, Earl Spence and Showtime and Fox, so they are really actually like the people that's going to fund this actual fight. So if you bring in a third source vendor, they're going to want their cut. And they don't want to share the no, problem. No, no, he no. Said, no he said, why come they didn't match the offer? Just give them oh. 25 minutes. So the other people saying, why you put a cap on it? Right. Fine. I'm going to bet on, we're going to bet on ourselves. I'm going to give you your 25 million and then I just keep everything else. Well, I, I think I think one of the reasons to answer that, I don't know Al Heyman, I don't know Terrence Crawford. But, I mean, but I think, like, that makes the most sense. If, think, if one side thinks it's worth way more, and you just said, hey, I just want $25 million and I'm good. All right, I'll give you your $25 million and then I, so now I'm minus $25 million, and but I'm going to take everything. So if I promote this thing and we get $100 million, hey, that's your loss. You wanted $25 million. You got what you wanted, and I got what I want. I don't, I don't think, um, I don't think Terrence Crawford know how to ne negotiate. You know, like if you go to a court, and you have to go up with a lawyer and he keeps saying that, you know, certain things were not offered to him. If you don't know how to 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 ask those things, nobody's going to tell you that if you don't know how to you only get what you negotiate. Was, that's that's my feeling about it. You repeating that YouTube shit, man. He not, just made listen, a good point. I didn't think about. Huh? You just made an excellent point. I didn't think about. I, I'm, I'm telling you, that when I was listening to him. Go ahead. So if you want to make the fight, what two things gotta happen? What do you want? Can I get you that? What do you want? Can I get right. you that? Y'all ain't said nothing. Twenty if for him saying he wants 25 million, that's easy. Okay. 25 million. Here you go. I agree. No, I, I mean, I, if I, I'm I, the I, other side, if you really that's what made the weather do. That's how Mayweather get all his fights. He'd be like, I'm going to offer you so much money up front, but I'm taking everything else. So, that's, what so, that's what Mayweather does. So he said, I'm going to give you $50 million Pacquiao. I'm 
I don't know what the number was, but mm -hmm. I'm going to gross everything else and I'm going to make over 100 million. So let me ask you this. So if you start negotiating in May of this year, and here it is, October of this year, and you came into the negotiation saying, I want 50 50 and I want upfront money. How long do you continue to negotiate? And you walked away saying that you would take 65 35 split and you taking the, the Lord, you turns Crawford. How long do you continue that conversation? Because if, if you came in saying that you want 50% and some upfront money, and the answer is no, 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 what are we talking about? So the what question. Is Go ahead. To me, the question is, whoever think that they can put uh, uh, Abram or whatever his name is, uh, how him. much do he think the fight is worth? Find the other person's buyout number. How much do I got to give you to fight? Period. That's all I want to know. That's and I, I give you that money. Hughes, that's all I was saying. It just seems like funny business on Heyman's part, on Spurs' yeah. part. Well, it, but, you know, is it? I know you guys talk about how Heyman <laughs> is kind of crooked. How he just kind of crooked up the game. I ain't, I ain't said that. That's jerk. Allegedly, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Allegedly, didn't say that. <laughs> somebody done crooked it up the game. So, um, but that's a really simple solution. But I guess y'all would know. Is that what Bud's saying? Is he just saying twenty five would have made the fight happen? Because that's, that's kind of that's kind of what he's saying. Twenty five would have made the fight happen. That's what he said. Twenty five would have made the fight happen. That seemed like first well, of all, 25, good, 25 and no like back a good end. number for somebody. You know, would they would they get they'll get fifty million, right? They get fifty million. They'll probably find to bring in fifty million, wouldn't it? At least. But but you gotta understand this though. If 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 you send that company to Al Heyman, right, he's gonna take his cut from both fighters. They're not walking away with twenty five million once he charged them out of that out of the 25, his percent, right? No, that, no, that's the part. He getting 25 million. Uh, hey, man, you keep everything else. You do whatever, what, what you want. You take your fighter and you do what you need to do. Is that what you're saying? The other <laughs> fighter is 25. 25 yeah, so. with his team. I guess. It's a different take. I haven't heard this take yet. It's a good what take. No one has said this. No, no. Okay, with this, there's like you said, people have Spence. Spence fans have Spence back. Crawford fans have Crawford's back. But nobody is looking at it like both sides and trying to figure out where the truth yeah. is. People right. Just say Spence is right. Crawford is right. That's a good point. If Crawford said, "All I need is twenty five, you keep the back end, keep all that shit. Just give me twenty five. Why wouldn't they just give him the twenty five? Make the fight. But 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 go back to what you just said, Jared. Remember when it was reported to ESPN, he said he took, he was going to get fucked in the deal, and he took a 65-35 split with him taking 35%, no guarantee. Mm -hmm. Remember he said that, right? Mm -hmm. And so originally it was reported that the fight did not take place because, what, what was his answer? He said the fight did not take place because they were dragging their feet. Because of the but expenses. The video, he never said any of that. On this video, he never said it in there. He said he signed all the agreements. So you came in with, with $25 million, and then you your final negotiation was that you got a 35% with no guarantee. I thought, and yeah. You I did th the negotiation. I thought his big hang up was he didn't know, he, did, he wanted to know what expenses was. I thought that okay. was a big hang up. He wanted to know. He wanted transparency. He wanted transparency. Okay. Hold on one second. You know, he never said that. That came from Coppinger. Okay. Well, he he told Coppinger because Coppinger didn't get it out the air. He that's why he never did no interview. He he's been feeding that information to Mike Coppinger. Remember, Mike Coppinger said the fight was <coughs> take place September, October, and November, per Crawford's report. But Crawford so, never went on re record saying any of that. So, okay, well that that makes. Because it seems like now Bud could be stalling because, okay, you telling me you want to see transparency or you telling me that <laughs> he was happy you said that. <laughs> what you telling me? Because you can't have both. You want 25 to make the fight? Let's do the 25. Hold on, hold on, hold right. on. He just said Crawford told Coppinger. Coppinger is an ESPN reporter, boxing right, reporter. Right. 
he was breaking all the news or whatever. We don't know what Crawford told him. It, it wasn't a quote in the article. We just, mm -hmm. just assuming it. Gotcha. Okay. But okay. on a video, what Crawford did say is that he did agree to everything. He just said he never signed. So he said he wanted transparency, right? So how can I show you what the fight generated we, if you haven't even signed anything and we don't have a fight? No, you have to agree to show me all this stuff. So that's yeah. part of the Muhammad Ali act, that every fighter gets, the, gets that transparency. What he was really trying to do was open up PBC books. Mm -hmm. That's a that. difference. That's a, that's a big difference of trying to open up their books versus I want to know how much you spend it and how much I'm he making. Play. That's he different. Play. He playing a different game. He ain't he really is. trying to make the fight. He he is, and that, See, that's, that's all I'm trying. So, to... so you really got down to these cats ain't really trying to fight. Nah. He trying to expose them. He trying to expose old boy. Yeah. And get his paper. So that's really what. So really, what it is, he's trying to expose. And this is just somebody that don't even. I don't even know who them two cats is. Mm -hmm. That was my first time ever seeing this dude in my life. Be in, but in I'm general. just thinking of it as. They just trying to expose. They really not trying to fight. So, Jared, what I want you to really pay attention to is, is to understand this. He's neg he negotiated with three with three people. He had a ten million dollar offer. He had the fifty million dollar offer, and he was negotiating with PBC. You don't see. You don't know that the people that gave that. him the people that he gave him ten that. could have been the same people that. No, he said he had two offers. He didn't say one was 10, one was 50. He said he had two offers. So it's I'm a, I, okay, you're right. So I assume that the last offer was the one he took. We don't know that. The, the, no, I don't. It could but have I been do. 25 for Spence, no Spence, then we'll give you 10. It could be the, the same company. But I just I just wanted to point out that he was negotiating with outside sources That's while true. he was supposed to be negotiating with PPC. We don't know that either. Man, he said that, Jared. Hold on one second. It could have been eight months negotiating with the PBC and then this other company called. It, it, it doesn't have to be eight months with three companies. I just found that to be a lie in the sense that you're a fighter and and people are reaching out to you. You know what I'm saying? You're, you're an actual fighter, and people are, are reaching out to you, not your, your representative, to, to put a deal together. I mean, that would be me. Like, if I had the money, I would say, if I had $50 million and I know I'm going to make a lot more, I would have floated the idea to them. That's just an investor trying to make some money. But you can't take, you can't take, and you can't, if I ask you, if you, if you bring that offer to me, and I say, what about the back end? And you can't give me an answer. And I say, well, who who's in charge of the head fund? And you like, well, we can't talk about it on the phone. Let's meet in person. That doesn't mean it's shady. That that could just be he didn't want to uh, get sidestepped. Like if mm -hmm. I like give him the your plug, you don't give somebody your plug. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So hold on. So if I, you, if, if I ask you who who sent him the money, and, and you like, I I can't tell you that. But you want right. me to say yes? You say said sending the money. Then you don't need me no more. You just go straight to paper. He's gonna find out where the money's coming from. It's not like he's gonna sign a blank sheet of paper, right? So it's not totally shady because he didn't want to tell him. You know, he probably just wanted to meet with him. Hey, and gets you know, get Spence to say yes, I'm interested. What's the next step? I would, I would personally think that if you were already dealing with Al Heyman and you have an offer, you could put that meeting together yourself. I ain't gonna lie to you. On a separate note, that's why I stopped watching boxing. It's too hard <laughs> to get a fight. <laughs> this is what um Stephen A. You got to go through motors in the way. You got to go through all this rigmarole. MMA, them cats would have been fighting two months ago. Yeah. And on to the second and the third. I mean, it's just the fight that people want to see. Pacquiao was five years too late. He Pacquiao. I'm just saying, it's just like, I can't deal with boxing only because of the, the fight people want to see. They tease you, they cancel, it never happened, and both of them going to get to 36, 37-year-olds trying to fight this fight. And then it's like, I wanted to see y'all five years ago, not 
when y'all both 30 plus and it's so, nothing. That's the exact place they own to, too, man. That's the exact place. So let me, let me add this all in Mayweather part. all over again. Five years too late. Let me add this little part to it. So the theme of the video was about Earl Spence is not his own boss and turns turns Crawford is his boss. And I didn't expect to hear that theme through that video at all. But what he really broke down was he was trying to sell this new opponent that nobody even wanted to see. And that guy that he's getting ready to fight had a fight schedule for November the 19th of this month. So you took a guy who was our, who was not even available. The BLK prime people had to pay that guy's promoter to break that fight. Here is a dude that's probably not even... I mean, he's in there. He's in our division, and, and he may be ranked, maybe like let's say eight or, or, or number ten or something like that. He's definitely not a quality opponent, of, of my opinion. You know, and he's like, I'm my own boss. But when he was bringing up the other undefeated young guys that's in the division, he was like, their name never came up. And my question is, if you a boss, you bring their name up. If that, if you, if you're claiming you're the best in the world, I can't get Earl Spence because you saying Earl Spence ducking you. You go to the other young guys that are are available. You know what I'm saying? But you went and got somebody and pulled them out of a fight that's over from the UK, and that's who you're trying to sell. This is a good fight. This is tough. Man. Yeah, he's still trying to keep that Spence fight. He knows Spence is the money fight, so he can't afford no loss. That's what that is. Give me an I, example. I don't ever think that. Give, well, give, a, give, me a, give us an example of who he could have who he could have fought instead, like who he could fight instead. Because I know, he, like he fought poor. Like who, who could he fought instead? Keith Thurman. He could, he could fight Keith Thurman. He could fight Jerron in his boots. That's that's out of Philadelphia. He could fight uh, Ortiz. He needs, a, he needs a tune up fight, man. He's not gonna. Fight. He does not need no tune up fight, man. That's that's his that's his <laughs> bad that he waited. Listen, he, so he was out of his contract uh, November of 2021. That's when he became a free agent, right? So he had the WBO belt all this time. This cat hasn't fought since. So boxing fans, we thinking that, okay, well, since he out his contract, this is going to be an easy fight to make between him and Al Heyman because you don't have the two promoters. But that turned around to be what, what killed the actual fight because Terrence Crawford needs somebody to negotiate for him. Hang on one second. Not, go ahead. Let me ask a question. And you, you're, right, you're right about that point. Everybody thought it was going to be an easy fight. He got rid, got rid of Bob Arum. Do you think it's easy for Crawford to take no guarantee, 65-35 split? You don't get to see the expenses. Just show up and fight, and we'll give you a check at the end. Do you think that's easy for him to, to take? That's an easy fight to make under, so under those it's terms. A, it's, a, it's a big money fight. You rarely hear about two top two top-notch fighters having no guarantee. But if I'm betting on myself, like this dude has said in several interviews, if you believe in yourself, it ain't about the money. So if I'm taking his words and using his words against him, Hold you on sign that line. Let me, I let wouldn't me, do it, though. Let me cut you off for one, okay. uh, one second. Let me add this in. We, we keep we skipping over this. I don't know why this hasn't come up. The, with all the news about the PBC being in money trouble, getting sued by their investors, losing $500 million in the first three years. Fighters saying that they have been guaranteed a million dollars for a fight. At the end of the fight, they get paid 700, 600,000. Um, the PBC says, sorry, the fight didn't sell, but you have a contracted guarantee and you're shorting fighters. Adrian Broner leaves the PBC, tells it all, starts talking about how the PBC is, is um, sketchy. Now, just add that into the mix with 65-35 split, no guarantee, you don't get to see the expenses, and I keep getting the Paul brothers mixed up. I think it's Logan Paul fought Mayweather last year. He still hasn't gotten paid. Now, add that all into the mix. Is that an easy fight to make? And, you know, this is not for, just for Hughes. This is for everybody. All those factors. Is it, Would you think that would, you know, be easy? You know, to sign with them? That's why he said the upfront money. That's why I said to me, it's easy because I'm saying pick my number, I want the upfront money, and then that's it. 
I don't care about the back end. I don't care about 60-40. None of that. When I get done fighting, this is what I come away with. And then that's it. I'm wrong. I'm wrong with that. Because they are sh- because of all this shenanigans, I need my money up front. And that, that's an interesting point, Ant, because you take what they were offering you and you use that as a counter offer to PBC. There's no, no way I'm, you get me. I'm to not fooling with PBC, no. man. They not paying people. They got money. They not paying people. He just said, "Box uh, 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 the dude still waiting on this money." No, nah, I'm not playing. Give me my money up front. Here go my number. I'll meet you in the ring after I get my paper. So the thing is, so the thing I'm thinking of is that he he never had he would have had a, a fight that'll make this kind of money in the first place. This that's that's number one. That's right. This new this is new money to him. Any way you chop it up. I'm I'm on the side of he didn't want to make a fight. I, I am because this is money that he he wouldn't have never seen. Okay, it didn't do what they thought it was gonna do. It has still made net him 15, 16 million. That's money which it should have did more, but it's it's still money, wealth, wealth building, life changing money that he hadn't seen in any fight. He could fight his next five fights and wouldn't make the money that this fight would make for him. Said so. It. Make the fight. Said it. You stop right there. You hold that thing. Now, just listen to this. Mm-hmm. You said he could have made 15, 16 easy. Fighting the toughest fighter he can fight in the world. Do we agree with that, uh, yeah. Hughes? That's the toughest fight. Spence is probably the favorite to beat Crawford. No, he's not. You don't think Spence is the favorite? No. Spence is the favorite, right? No. Okay. Hold Crawford on. is. Okay, table that. We're going to get to who's the favorite. So, Cedric, back to your point. He's trying to negotiate with the PBC. is is not going right. It's falling through. They don't want to show him. We, we went all, all through all the factors already. And then this second company shows up and says, "We'll give you ten million to fight this bomb, guaranteed." Mm-hmm. What do you do? Do you take that ten, or I'm do gonna, you keep playing around with this fifteen, sixteen, maybe money? I'm gonna take that ten. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna take the ten if that because that's still a big a big fight for me. You know, I mean, he made ten a fight. That's so, all I'm saying. He was just. I'm gonna take that ten. So take let me let me add let me let me sprinkle something in here. So to go back to what Jura said about uh, the the bad rip that uh, PBC has, right? About not paying fighters and, and things like that, right? So BLK Prime comes out of nowhere and say, "We'll pay you ten million dollars, then we go get the back end." Here you got a company that ain't never did that before. So. What you fear in PBC, you may be running to with BLK. We don't know if he's not getting the back end. We don't. We don't even know if if he getting ten million dollars. We kind of do because Aram came out and said the guy he's fighting already got paid. That's Frank Warren. That's Frank Warren, the promoter of the guy that he's already fight, fighting. So that's a so that's how you know that was a big old lie because that guy was already scheduled to fight. No, he said. Um, Avanesian, if I'm saying it right, already got that's, a check. That's, that's his name. That's his name. That's that's somebody. That's somebody they couldn't have guaranteed to fight him if they broke their contract like that. So we're gonna give you ten million dollars. We're gonna give you ten million dollars, and we we got an opponent that we're contacting his 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 promoter that we 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 already got what they pay both fighters. So you have to break that fight just to give Terrence Crawford. Ten million dollars. So you probably that company probably out of twelve million dollars if everything is correct. My song gonna die. Oh, sorry. Okay. No, let's, no, let's, just you know. One more point, then we can kind of wrap it up, guys. Okay. We're closing in on the hour. We have to make some assumptions about things being true in this situation. They signed Adrian Broner. He hasn't complained. You have to assume he got some of his money up front. Bob Arum, who has nothing to do with this, said Avanesian got his money up front. Crawford is not complaining. You have to assume he either got that ten million up front, or he got a deposit on it. So we can't just say we don't think he got it. He got he got something. He wouldn't walk away from Spence Crawford to fight on BLK Prime again for no money up front. It doesn't make sense. I don't think he wanted to fight me, Carson. Okay. No, <laughs> All right, <laughs> that was a good good take, Cedric. 
You still okay? You froze up for a second. All oh, right, no. let's go. Let's go back. Who's the favorite, Spence or Crawford? I thought you would have said Spence all day. Well, I'm rolling with Spence, but every everybody from the the veterans in, in ESPN side, they have Spence's. They have Crawford as the favorite. Really? That's, yeah, that's... he's he's like he's like the pound for pound number one fighter. So there's no way you can have a pound for pound number one fight as an underdog in the fight. He's like the mm-hmm. pound for pound. He's the number one welterweight too. Okay. One belt. Got forget forget their opinion. Skill wise, who's your favorite? Mm. Uh, I'm the Spence. He fought the harder competition. Uh, Come on, Tyler. We gotta watch the movie. So I believe in him. You know, he came from a car accident, fought Danny Garcia, and that was like a 50-50 fight. He proved that. He came back from an eye injury, fought a tough Cuban dude that just beat Manny Pacquiao. So I was skeptical about that. He he showed me he was real good. Crawford has not fought one fighter that was in his prime or that is going to the Hall of Fame from 135 to, to 140. He's been fighting all like has been guys. We can't. I can't argue that point. You look at his um, his boxing record. That's about true. Hmm. Yeah, Spencer's had the tougher competition so far. So I wouldn't trust him, being that he's older. He's never been in a war like that. I wouldn't trust him in a fight where Spence. I know Spence gonna bring that war to him. I don't know what he got. He really haven't taken a punch from a welterweight. Who, who Crawford? Yeah, he really haven't taken a, a, a real punch from somebody that's in, in their prime and that's elite like that. What I was trying to say, I meant to say that, he hasn't fought an elite fighter. He's fought fighters that was has been. You know, like Bob Irm is probably one of the best uh, promoters out there because he'll just put you in line and, and, and have you on that network and they'll just be selling these fights and stuff. You know, but once you break away, you're going to have to fight. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right, fellas. Let's see if we can um, keep this under an hour. Let's go to our last segment, which is the Swerp of the Week. <laughs> Again, Swerp of the Week. A Swerp can be anything. It can be a, uh, somebody tripping and falling. It can be somebody doing something dumb. It can be somebody doing something nice or good. For us, it's probably going to be somebody doing something dumb. So let's go with the Swerp of the Week. Cedric, you kick this off. Quick, quick swerp of the week just happened. I just, it just happened. And first podcast, he doesn't charge his phone up so he can stay for the whole thing. No. Swerp of the week first, right off the bat. Oh, my God. And didn't stop to plug it up. Right. Uh-uh. Swerp of the week. Who your swerp of the week, Jared? I'm going to throw this out. I know you guys probably ha- might have a take on this. It just, the new, the story just broke. Kyrie Irving just got suspended for five days because he wouldn't say that he was not anti Semitic. Uh, you know, this is his second, that I know about, second controversy. First, it was the vaccine. Now, this. How do you guys feel about um, Kyrie Irving? Would you have just say, hey, I'm not anti Jew? Just apologize. You know, for the statement he made about that that book or movie that he was talking about, or do you hold your ground and and ride it out? He to me, Jer, he's he's a you. That's a good point. That's a good swerp of the week because he just he all over the place, man. Just apologize, keep it moving. He's right. he's like one of those guys that think he's always the smartest in the room. Mm-hmm. So we think he's highly intelligent, <laughs> and he, you know, we just gotta you make a mistake and you gotta keep it moving, right? So. I, I, in my opinion, he just that's what he do. Play basketball, man. I mean, you don't want to shut up and play basketball, but just but stay in your lane on some stuff. That's just that's just way over the top. He he just way too much for me. So I I agree with that swerve definitely. Yeah. I think it's like a power move for him, and I think um, the people in power love taking intelligent guys and trying to break them. You know, to me. This has nothing to do with damn basketball. You know what I'm saying? And and it's important for them to always have their athletes do interviews right after the game, whether they win, they lose, you know, so they got emotions involved. I think those athletes just doing too much, you know, and, and for him, 
when I listen to him, yeah, you're 100 percent correct. He he really reminds me of, of Kanye a lot. You know what I'm saying? He really reminds me. He, he has a different type of thought. And that's nothing bad or nothing like that, because here in this country, we're supposed to have free speech. But we clearly see we clearly see that there's no such thing as free speech when you when you are a working person. You know what I'm saying? When you get paid, you got to watch what you say and you have to protect your brand. And that's not no shot at your manhood or anything of that nature. You don't owe any of your family members. You have to you have to walk that line. You have to play this play this game, their game, because it's their rules just to get that money. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And you have to bite your tongue and hold your tongue. You shouldn't, as an athlete, you should never reveal who you really are, even though they want to ask you and stuff like that. You should never reveal who you really are, you know, and how you really fo- how you really think keep that barbershop talk in private you know what i'm saying but but when you're professional you know you, you keep it with the bubble gum answers and stuff you know all right fellas we made it to the end just over an hour we did a lot better this time um uh, before we nah, go my swear of the week i'm sorry i'm sorry my yeah. swear of the week i'm sorry my fault is either between I'm trying to debate is it between Turns Profit and that lion ass video <laughs> or whoever killed takeoff in, in Houston. Man. Uh, like, whoever took that video, I hate I saw that, but that whole thing was just tragic to me. So I would lean more towards the takeoff. Whoever shot that, whether that was his man or enemy, however that goes. That's that's work, man. You know that that's work. How how them guns got drawn like that off a of conversation and stuff like that. You know. Yeah, whoever did that, he's done. You know, they have his picture already. You know, it's on TMZ. His his face and him holding the gun. Yeah. So was he part of the crew? I don't know. Uh, still coming out. Yeah, still coming out. That's crazy. All right, we made it to the end. Um, rate, like, subscribe. If you wait a couple more seconds, you'll hear a takeoff slash Migo tribute mix at the end of this podcast. Again, we we send our um, condolences out to his family. He was only 28 years old, shot over and killed over nothing. So rest in peace, takeoff. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. All right. All right, fellas. That's it. Peace. All right. Peace.